So what we need to do now is create that database. So we're going to go into My SQL Databases and we're going to create one. Now, this is not something you will use on a regular basis. WordPress will store things in the database, like new users that you create every time you make a blog post, when you upload images, uh, when you create links and URLs and all those things. All that is stored and referenced in the database. Okay, so let's talk about creating a database name. Uh, it can not be longer than seven characters. Uh, and so there's two things to think about when making a database name. One, it should not be easy to guess because you will get hacked. So this would be a bad uh, name for a database, WordPress. That would be horrible. Don't do that. Uh, it also shouldn't be your first name. Uh, so ideally it should be something that has some numbers and letters. So you could do something like WP33576. Uh, right? Or how about this? 3357. Something like that would be a good WordPress database. We do create and then it shows us database has been added spring to underscore because this is our username WP3357. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm going to go ahead and put that in our text file. So I'm going to put this under WordPress setup. This is our database name and I'll do my colon now. All right, there we go. Oops. Drag that up. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to go back because the second thing we need to do after creating a database is to create a user. The user will take actions against that database. And so what I recommend is making it the same name to keep things straightforward. So I'm going to copy WP3357. It can be anything, but this is just to keep it consistent. Now, you will not be using this password on a regular basis. In fact, you will only, you will only use it once to set up WordPress to connect to the database. So it should be something very difficult because, again, your goal is to create a secure uh, environment in which to create your content. So, you know, just like if you bought a nice house, you wouldn't leave it unlocked with the door open, right? Or a car. Like if you went, you're like, oh, let's go see a movie. And you just bought a new car last week. You would not leave the car unlocked with all the windows down while you went to go see a movie, right? You would make sure the windows are up. You would lock the car door and you would not leave any valuables in plain sight. We're going to do the same thing with WordPress. No different. Okay, so uh, we're now going to go ahead and use the password generator, which will suggest a pretty secure password. And if you don't like that, you can go ahead and click through generate passwords a couple times. That one looks pretty good. Now, they changed this recently, sometime early this year, late last year. But it will now ask you to click here, verifying that you have copied this down. Because what happened is people will be like, oh, yeah, I totally can remember that. And then they would get to the, the setup part of whatever they were using the database for, and it wouldn't work. So again, we're going to bring up our notepad here, and then we're going to do database user and database password. All right. And I'm putting that in, and our user is the same name. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. And remember, you can see here, actually, I put a space between this and this. Just make sure, that's another thing, too, when you're putting in passwords and things, make sure that there's not an extra space. So I'm going to say, yes, I have stored my password. And it says, very strong. Great. Now we're going to create a user. See, because we created a database. Now we're creating a user. Create user. Okay. And then there's our password. So we go back. And now we need to join the user to the database. Add user to database. We only have one user and one database, so this is pretty easy. So we click Add. Now we're going to give access uh, to the new database with that user. So we're going to say here, all privileges. So that way the user now, on behalf of WordPress, can add content, delete content, update content, right? Pretty much all the, all the essentials. OK, and they have been added. So now when we go back to our MySQL area, we can see current databases. Here's the database. It's empty. Here's the user. And then we're good to go. 